All right, let's open our Bibles up, guys. Yes, yes, yes. You guys ready for this? This is an exciting message, and I don't want you to have your antennas up because it is a fine, uh, financial message. So I don't want, especially if it's your first time here, <laughs> um, I don't want you um, uh, thinking, oh, it's all about money. You know what? The, the beautiful thing about, um, about this is I have no, no I, when we preach the Bible, we want to preach the whole thing. We don't want to skip over some things. So we're going to talk about family finances today, and, and that's the sermon for today. And, and um, first of all, before, before I jump into the sermon, why don't we all pray for, for this campaign and for the city? I really feel it on my heart that, that we should do that right now because I really feel like we need, where do you put a light? Do you hide the light under a chair? You put the light in somewhere where there's darkness. That's all we're trying to do. Put our light in this world so people can see it shine and people can come and be lights with us. I pr I'm going to pray. Let's pray for everyone. Um, I don't want to be a bunch of lights together lighting up the same place when there's a bunch of darkness over there that needs some light. That's what it's all about. Yeah, man. Let's, let's pray. Heavenly Father, it's all about you, Jesus. It's all about you. It's all this is, is all about you. We want to see people come to your feet. We want to see people, lives transformed. People maybe that were uh, struggling with addiction freed. We want to see people that, that about on the verge of divorce come and receive you, Jesus, and then uh, know that they have strength to continue in their marriage. We want to see families transformed. We want to see the city for you, Jesus. Waterloo region, not just the city, Canada, Ontario, all of it, North America. We want it to expand. We want it to go. And this is what it's all about. Let us, let us be vessels in your hands that you can use. Let us be people that you can use, Jesus. In your name we pray. We pray for the people that are going to come through those doors. Maybe haven't been to church for a long time. We pray for them even now. And we see the seats in this place full. Full of people, not not necessarily not Christian people. Full of people that think Christian people are weird. <laughs> full of people that have never heard maybe the gospel. We're asking for that, Jesus. In your name. Amen. 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 So I, I wanna Open your Bibles up. I want to read this first verse that we got on here. And it's um, 1 Corinthians 1, 1 Corinthians 1st chapter, verse 20. And I'm going to read, if you take out your notes, it's in your notes. Um, it's the NIV version. So we're going to read it all together. Let's, let's see if we can, you can follow along with me. It says this, where is the wise man? It's a question. Where is the scholar? Where is the philosopher of this age? Has, he, has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? Wow. Let, let me pray just before I, I, I start t talking. Heavenly Father, we just pray that this word really come and, and, and on, on hearts that are receiving it. And let us learn what the word says about this thing that people are scared to talk about. And, and it's about money. Let it, let, it, let, us, um, let it be you speaking, not me. Eliminate me from the equation. Take me out of it. Let it be you speaking. Hide me behind your Calvary cross. In your name we pray. Amen. And I want to start with the, I, I love, I love getting, talking about myths first, because a lot of times we hide behind myths. And a lot of times I, what I like to do is identify a myth so that we can eliminate that as a possibility of what we're thinking about. And the first myth, if you got your notes there, the first blank is all we need is a little bit more. That's the first blank. All we need is a little bit more. Because isn't it true that when, when you got saved, I remember when I was, I was young, I just got, I was, I was in high school, and I was working at a variety store, and I was working night shift, and I thought to myself, if I just have a little more money, that's all I need, I don't need much more, and you know what happened is, and everyone's probably been in these, in this situation, you're asking God for a thousand dollars, and once you get that promotion, once you get that job that you're making more money, what happens is you need you start 
Uh, lifting up your life and your and your surroundings to spend that money and now you just need what a little more and it's the never-ending myth that all you need is a little more that's 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 not what we need that's not what what um the bible teaches what we really need is not a little more but what we need is the ability to know what to do with what we have how many people have read The Wealthy Barber? Anybody? The book, the, the idea about the book is this barber making not that much money is actually wealthy. Not because he makes a lot of money, but because he knows what to do with what he makes. So this is the number one myth. All I need is a little more. Let's look at Ecclesiastes 5. Verse 10 and 11, the New Living Translation says this, those who love money will never have enough. So you're always, if I had a little more, if I had a little more. How meaningless to think that wealth brings true happiness. The more you have, the more people come to help you spend it. Isn't that the truth? In fact, if you have some money, I can help you spend it. No, I'm joking. <laughs> so what good is wealth? except perhaps to watch it slip through your fingers. So it's, it's not necessarily saying that money is evil or, or, or the problem or it's, it's bad or a sin to have money, but it's saying those who love money will never have enough. So are you in that situation where you never have enough? Are you in that situation where you think, if I only had a little more? So you, I want you guys to put yourself in these verses and just and filter yourself how meaningless is it to think that the wealth brings true happiness are you someone that's thinking money can't buy me happiness but i'm happy because i could buy what i want are, are you thinking money if i had a little more money i would be happy we all know that um wealthy people commit suicide Amen. Have you guys heard of this? So it, it's not that money is going to bring us happiness at all. This is, this is a myth, and this verse is so clear, and I love the way it says it. If we would only analyze that verse a little more, but we're going to go a little further because um, time is short. Let's look at Philippians 4.12. I know what it is, oh, I love this verse, to be in need. And I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. Wow, this is great. And I've, 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 I've talked to people that have been living on the streets with nothing. And I've, they have come upon money and this is the thing we got to understand that the richest countries in the world are sometimes not the happiest the sometimes the poorest countries the kids that are playing with the with the rocks for hours aren't they sometimes the happiest kids and they have no toys at all in fact don't some of the kids that have so many toys when you buy them another toy they're like ah another toy they don't even care it's not about what you got. It's about what's going on in here. I want us to be in a point where whether I have, and, and do, do not misunderstand me. I'm not talking about evilness of having money or anything like that. I'm talking about whichever your situation, whichever, if, if you got nothing, glorify God in the nothing that you got because he's still a God. If you got lots, Glorify God in the midst of plenty because he is still God. It's in whatever situation that you're in, I won't be deterred of glorifying God. It's not about me, it's about him. And my circumstance will not determine my praise for God. My circumstance, whether I have much or whether I have uh, little, will not determine my praise. That's why I can come up here every Sunday and you see me praising because whether i am got bills that are not going to pay themselves or whether all my bills are paid, Christ 
is Lord of Lords. How many say amen? Yes. And I want us, I want us to have this in our minds that our stuff will not bring us happiness. That 55-inch screen TV that you just walk by and say, turn on, and it turns on. You know there's TVs like that? Samsung, turn on. Ching, ching, ding, ding. What would you like to watch? What the? I, you know, a, a brother, I went to a brother's house, and he's like, oh, yeah, look at my TV. Turn on. I'm like, whoa, man. And, and, and it's not bad to have these things. It's, it's about are you trusting these things, and, and are they becoming your God? Second blank. Our stuff is our stuff. That's a myth. Look at this verse. Psalm 24, 1. The world and all that is in it belong to the Lord. The earth and all who live on it are his. So you know your shirt that you paid for? It's not yours. You know the seat that you're sitting on? It's not yours. You know what? Everything, even your kids are not yours. How many say amen? Your kids are not yours. They're borrowed. So you better take care of borrowed things. I got, we got to take care of our borrowed things. Imagine, you know that friend that asks for stuff, that, you know, always asking for stuff they want to borrow, and then they return it to you and it's in bad condition? You don't want that kind of friend around you, right? Some of us are doing that with God's stuff. We got to be, and I want, I'm going to talk about it a little later on, but stewards or managers of what God's stuff, that's all we are. Steward is a Christian old English word, but we're managers. We're managers of what we've got. Are you managing the way you're supposed to be managing? Are you thinking through before you buy things? I, I remember a brother said, oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sneak out when my wife's at work and buy TV, sofas. He f furnished his whole living room while his wife was at work. Is, isn't that nuts? So I want us, I want us to, to really think about this. Our stuff is not our stuff. Next one. We have plenty of time. Let's look at Luke 21, 34 to 36. It says this. Watch out. Don't let your hearts be dulled by crazing um, and drunkenness and by the worries of this life. Don't let that day catch you unaware like a trap. For the day will come upon everyone living on the, on the earth. Keep alert at all times. That's another myth. We don't, have, we don't know how much time we have. This second, Christ could come back. This second. In a twinkling of an eye. Like this. That's it. A blinking. In, in Spanish, in the Bible, it says, of a closing and opening of an eye. It's, 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 you know, time's not yours. When do you decide? Or do you decide when you're going to die? Or live? Or how long you're going to live? It's in God's hands. Next blank. I will, it will all work out somehow. This is a big myth. Proverbs 21.5. Let's see what it says. The plans of the diligent lead to profit as surely as haste leads to poverty. So you know what we're doing even, even when we're talking about this outreach or campaign? We want to plan and we want to be diligent. Because I don't want to sit here and, 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 and say, come, come, when the Bible says go. Doesn't the Bible say go? Yeah. So we want to go, but it also says come to Jesus. So we want to go, and we want to tell them, and we want to say that we're here. We want to invite them in case nobody's invited them. We want to tell them, but we also want them to come and, and hear the word. Faith cometh by hearing, the hearing of the word of God. So we want to be his hands and feet. So it's about making plans. So we want to be good stewards of the people God sends. But we want to plan. It doesn't happen accidentally. You know all these people that you see, you know, um, doing great stuff for God? They've been planning it. They pay their bills. Amen? 
they they do what they gotta do. So let's look at the other section that says family finances. Isaiah 55, 8 and 9 says this. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. Are we seeking God? for the decisions we make financially. Do you know, I, I, I would love to see everyone um, in, this, in this room just praying to God before they make a decision, seeking the right advice. Because, you know, the number one reason marriages break up? Finances, money problems. The enemy can try and use that to break up your marriage. Absolutely. Man, you know what I mean? Like it's 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 about us jumping ahead of what could potentially be a problem. That's why you know what? We like the first um we 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 thankfully to God, me and my wife said we never want to rent a day in our life. And when we were living with our parents, we started saving, and when the wedding was coming, we got married young. We started planning at 19. We got married at 20. But when 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 we decided that we didn't want to rent, we bought what we could afford, and it wasn't much. It was in a student. It was in Waterloo where there's a bunch of students, and man, there was it was party heaven. Like Friday night for me, man. Like you know, we're trying to go to sleep, and you know, it's it's. It's wild, but, but we, we, we never helped anyone pay their mortgage. We paid our own mortgage. And, and when we sold that house, thank God, that was, it, it was a good investment. I don't know what you're praying about. I would seek people. On, if, if I would seek people, godly people, that, that might be able to help you even in your decisions financially. I see nothing wrong with that. I mean, don't be asking everyone, you know, but go to someone that has experience in that. Number one, God's way is counterintuitive. <laughs> I love this verse. verse. Proverbs eleven twenty four says this. Give freely and become more wealthy. Huh? Be stingy and lose everything. counterintuitive so guys sometimes we think that more that we don't spend the more money we're going to have but if you analyze that verse it says give freely and become more wealthy isn't it awesome that the more sometimes someone gives i've heard testimonies of people giving even in their time of desperate need and and having God just return it. How many have testimonies like that or know those testimonies? It's phenomenal. You know, I always tell this story, man. My my wife is a giver. She gives stuff to people. And she loves to give away my stuff. Every time she gives away my clothes and my my you know my favorite stuff. And I'm not angry about it. <laughs> Every time she does this and I look at my closet and it's starting to be empty, the next time I look at my closet, God's put more clothes in there. Why are you trying so hard to hang on to what you got? Give freely. I got to learn this too. I remember when we went to Cuba, and, and I'm not trying to give a guilt trip to anyone, but we took, we took our, our, um, our, our, what do you call them, baggage? It, we, we took our clothes and all this stuff. We took a bunch of stuff, and when we weren't planning on this, but when we went and when we came back, we came back with nothing. We just left it all there. And, and uh, it's just the more that we give, the more that God gives to us. Can we put our hands together for God? Come on, yeah. I don't want to 
I, I don't want to be here with a bunch of stingy people. No, it's okay. <laughs> I want us to learn that. <laughs> I want us to learn that. And I'm not, I'm not saying be reckless. I'm saying be spirit-led. If God's telling you to give that person whatever, a $10 bill, follow what God is saying. Oh, no. Oh, my goodness. That's, that money is already claimed. You know what I mean? I, I got that. That's for Rogers. I want us to be spirit-led in this. Number two, God's way is based on performance. Put that out there. Based on performance. And we're going to let the verses explain what that is saying. Luke 16, 10 and 11. Whoever can be trusted with very little can also be trusted with much. And whoever is dishonest with very little will also be dishonest with much. So if you do, if, so if you have not been trustworthy in handling worldly wealth, who will trust you with true riches? Wow, isn't that awesome? That's why I want to be trustworthy with the souls God is going to bring, is bringing to this place. The more, the, you know where God brings people? Where there is good stewards. That's what, you know. So I want us to be a people that love people. 2 Corinthians 9, 10 and 11. For God is the one who provides seed for the farmer and then bread to eat. In the way... In the same way, he will provide and increase your resources and then produce a great harvest of generosity in you. Wow. Yes, you will be enriched in every way so that you can always be generous. And when we take your gifts to those who need them, they will thank God. Hmm. That's beautiful. Because of the time, let's keep going. Number three, God's way is rewarding amen that is the truth when you're spirit led it's rewarding i've have you have you guys not heard somebody say when i gave so and so this it was so rewarding but you didn't receive anything you gave and it was rewarding god's way is rewarding even if your mind gets in the way of what your spirit is telling you. You know, that's, that's the problem that most of us have. Our mind gets in the way of the spirit. So your mind tells you, no, do not give this. What, what are you going to eat? You're not in a state to be given. All this stuff gets in the way of the spirit. Proverbs 3 9 and 10 says this. Honor the Lord with your wealth, with the first fruits of your crops. Wow. So you get your little check and you honor the Lord with, because we don't have, I don't think many of us have farms here. Amen. No. So this is our paycheck. So we honor the Lord with our first fruits, not with what's left over. Now, oh yes, okay. I spent it all, but here, I'll give what. It's not what, that's not what this verse is saying. Because God knows that if you just give without giving the first, you're not going to give what you should be giving. Then your barns, barns will be filled to overflowing, and your vats will bring over with new this is counterintuitive. Give, and you will receive. It's sort of like, how about that person that needs hugs all the time? How, how do you get a hug? You give a hug. How do you get smiles? You give smiles. It's, it's funny because I've talked to people that say, the more I give, the more I get. In miraculous ways. And sometimes if you give, he will give you in different ways. He'll give you healthy family. I pray that, you know, you know when my kids were born? I didn't pray that they look exactly like me. You know what I was praying? I wasn't praying, 
Let them be handsome like their father. Let them have my hair. You know what I mean? Let them have my muscles. You know what I was praying? Let them have their, all their fingers and their toes. Let them be healthy. At the end of the day, isn't that what's important? It's not about all this other stuff that we're getting involved in, we're getting confused in. Isn't it about God and, and, and who can we touch? How can you touch a life? How could you impact God for this community? How can we reach Kitchener for God? How can we transform this place? How are we going to you know, preach so much and fill this place up that the bars have to close? How are we going to transform this place for Christ? Isn't that what's important in this community? I don't want a girl... I don't want to grow wealthy, 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 stingy, stingy, stingy. I want to grow in my giving. Wow. Let's look at the last verse. Matthew 6, 19 and 21. And with that, I close. Do not store up for yourself treasures on earth, but store up for yourself treasures in heaven. That's what the campaign is. Treasures in heaven. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Let me ask you, where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Where is your heart? And don't give me the politically correct answer. Tell me where your treasure is, and I'll tell you where your heart is. Do you know that giving is an act of worship? Some people are really good at singing. What about giving? It's part of worship. I, I, I'm not, I know, I'm not preaching because I, you're not going to find me on saying I give 40% of my income or stuff like that. Look at me. You guys got to do the same. I'm just reading these verses and saying, God, teach me. All I, all I want, because I don't like skipping verses. Have you met those people? Oh, let's skip here. Let's skip here. Let's skip here. Oh, Jesus loves me. Jesus is good for me. Grace, glory, God. Woo! And then when it says give, whoever could be trusted with little and, and honor the, God, uh, the Lord your, uh, with, with wealth. And then when it says do not store up, for up don't store in um, yourself treasures on earth. Where are those verses? Ah, that's for the Jewish people. That was back then. This is now. Let's take the whole Bible. And the key verse I want you to remember, and with this I close. I have learned to be content, whatever my situation, with little, with a lot. If I cannot buy my Jordans this year, it's okay. If you've got to buy that big TV, you know those big ones that people are throwing out now? It's okay. You don't have to have the latest and the greatest. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for this message. Thank you for teaching us so much through your word. Your word is so complete. It talks about money. It talks about relationships it talks about everything that we going through we can run to it we can apply it we can make it applicable to our lives it's great and we love you for it thank you for your word thank you because it's so complete i just pray god that if you've been touching somebody's heart this afternoon and they say maybe i have to step my game up maybe i have i want to see your kingdom come i want to see your your will be done but i have been slacking a little bit in this area i just pray that it not even be me don't i don't i don't get anything from this i don't want i don't want it to be about me speaking let it be you speaking because i can say a thousand words and they mean nothing but if you just say one word it's got more power than anything i could ever say let it be you speaking to every person in this place thank you god thank you for our jobs thank you for our family thank you for our health thank you for what you've done for us thank you for what you're doing thank you for what you're going to do Thank you, thank you, thank you. Don't let us be ungrateful people. We want to be grateful for what you've given us already and you 
Sometimes they're teaching us to stop and just look around and say thank you. Jesus, we thank you for our family. God, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you. Help us be content in what we have. Help us be fruitful in what good stewards of what you've given to us. I pray, God, that you just shed some light in, in, in this area for us. We love you, God. We honor you. In your name, Jesus, we pray. Hallelujah. How many people say amen? Amen.